Okay. Um, so I have a 360 booth and I have a photo booth right and now. And you have a photo booth. Yeah. Which one do you like running? <laughs> Is there one that you like to run more than the <clears throat> other when it comes to operation? Did I put you on the spot? No, it's just they're both a lot of fun. The 360 booth is a lot more work, and it does take a lot more energy, I feel like. Yeah. Um, especially for someone that is a little more soft-spoken. Um, mm. And I do drive a smaller car. I have a Honda Civic, so yeah. um, I, I guess I prefer the photo booth a little more than the 360 because um, it's still just... I, I feel like it's just as much fun as the 360. Mm. And I can fit all the stuff in my Honda Civic and I don't need to bring someone with me to help me. So yeah. um, it does kind of, for me, it comes out to being the same, the same profit too. A little less work. I definitely like the photo <laughs> booth. I'm starting to like the photo booth more than the 360. Because when I first got started, it was all about the 360. And I love video footage. But now that i am been in it for two years now, the 360, like you said, first of all, I got a question for you real quick. So being a female, right? Was it very difficult for you to carry that 360? Because it's fucking heavy, right? Yeah, it's like, what, over 80, 80 something pounds? Right. And it's like three, three feet long. Did you ever do an event by yourself where you had to carry it by yourself? Yeah, okay. once. It honestly wasn't that bad because I was going to the gym a lot at that time. Oh, so damn. it wasn't as bad, but um, okay. <laughs> but it's definitely a lot easier and you don't sweat as much if you have someone helping you. So I usually bring someone with me to help with the 360 events specifically for the platform because right. it's not light. So what you're saying is before someone considers getting into the photo booth industry and starting with the 360, they should first get a gym membership Definitely. and then become a 360 booth? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. No, I mean like... <laughs> I'm kidding. So two events right off the bat. One gave you a sense of confidence and there wasn't too much pressure because it was your very own family, right? Mm -hmm. And then you said you had the upcoming one in, in September for a church. December. So December. A, a couple months later, because I was working two jobs yeah. still at that working time. Working two jobs. Definitely like, yeah. I didn't leave the job until the beginning of December. The serving job, which was on the weekend. Yeah, so after that, I was able to focus more. When you did your second event, because it was a real paying <laughs> client, mm -hmm. do you remember any struggles you went through that you can look back at? and say, I, I, I should have done this or I should have had a different state of mind and framed it differently. Because a lot of people, from people that reach out to me, they always have high anxiety or are very stressed. So to those people, what, what would you give them as far as advice goes? Because we've all been there. And some people I, I know are watching this and are thinking of getting into the industry. So what does a shy person like you uh, how do you psych yourself out? I know you said bring someone with you to the event because that helps a little bit. Mm -hmm. So can you elaborate on that or expand on things that work for you? Do you sit in the parking lot and like take a quick shot and then go into the event or? No, <laughs> I don't remember honestly. I remember the event wasn't, it wasn't anything like, it, it wasn't hard because um, like we, we barely even had to lift anything because um there were a lot of like young guys working at wow, that place wow that don't you know what so they I, came don't over and there was one guy that just picked course, up the whole platform of just, course <laughs> yeah he wanted to show off his guns or what whatever. is that called pretty privilege huh yeah no for me no one's so ever guess, offered to help so <laughs> you know what being a girl you do get offered help a lot oh you know what i got a question a so being a girl do you get tips often I don't, you, no, why, I, wait, 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 I don't why think, did you take so long to answer? Because I had to think about it. That much? I don't think it... <laughs> you lost track of how many hundreds and hundreds of dollars you received in tips. No. Huh? It's not fair. It's just not fair. I don't think the gender has anything to do with tips. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I feel like you get tipped more than I do. You really think so? Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think tips, you really have to go out there and just... Be enthusiastic as fuck. Mm -hmm. Be high energy, like. And then when the when the people come around that hired you, turn up a volume or two. Get extra loud. Mm -hmm. And when they walk away, you know, pick up the yeah. cake and start eating real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going through the the face community group, guys. If you guys are um, tuned in right now, the community is called 360 Booth Global Family. If you guys want to join the community, I was scrolling through the community. And someone posted this photographer that walked out on the wedding because they didn't want to serve him a plate. I saw that. 
And I thought to myself, dude, that is crazy. But you know what sucks though? Mm -hmm. Sometimes us as vendors, we're out there and you said, right? I, earlier you stated that it was a staple of the, the party, right? Mm -hmm. It's the highlight next to the DJ. I think we are the highlight. Mm -hmm. We really are. So for them not to, and you know what? It's, I get bar her sometimes. Mm -hmm. I got bar her once. I'll tell you why. The photographers and the videographers had a little table they were eating. Mm -hmm. No one gave a shit about the 360 booth operator. David over there just turning it up. Yeah. What the heck? So I didn't say nothing because I just thought to myself, you know what? Next time I should bring me some a nutrition bar or a trail mix or something. But I thought that was really messed up as like, how you leave out one of your vendors like that. No, right. Because if they're going to give food to the other vendors, then you would think that they would consider you too. Mm -hmm. It makes sense if they didn't give it to any of the vendors or if they just like ran out of food. Because mm -hmm. that's happened to me before where there was a wedding and they were only expecting like 350 people, but I think like 400 showed up. So they just ran out of food. Mm. Um, so then afterwards we just went and, and, and got our own food, but, yeah. um, no, that's crazy. I, I would never walk out of a wedding because at the same time we're not expected to But on the fit. flip side, did you know that that guy was doing it as a favor for his friend because the real photographer didn't show up? Mm. The, the guy I, that posted it on Facebook? Yeah, so I don't know okay. if I would continue being friends with that person. I know they're busy, it's their wedding, it's their big day, mm -hmm. but if, if your friend goes out there and tries to save you, how are you not going to have a plate no, for the yeah, homie? You, you have to take care, take care of your friends and family Jeez. for sure. Don't you, when it comes to two, three, four hours, do you have a preferred length on the sessions you like getting booked for? I, myself, I love two hour bookings because it feels like you're in and out. Right, but then the pay is not as good as like a three, four hour Right, booking. because if you do stay there, you've already unloaded and set up. So if you stay there an extra hour, you can make anywhere from 100 to $150 for that extra hour, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. So you don't mind four hour events? You don't, you don't run out of energy? I think three hours is like the perfect time. The sweet spot? Because like the last 30 minutes, you kind of start getting like tired and stuff like that, yeah. depending on the event too. Mm -hmm. um, Some could be draining, right? Talk yeah. about it. And it's crazy because it's like, if it's too slow or if it's like super, super busy, like you, th those will both still, still get you kind of tired. Um, you have to enter what's called a flow state mm -hmm. where it's just challenging enough to where time flies. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if it's too slow, it's too dull, too boring. If it's way too packed, it's way chaotic, too much shit going on. Mm -hmm. It becomes of a, a headache and it gets draining, right? From all the events that you've had so far to this day, has there been one event that almost caused you to get out of the industry that you were really turned off by? Any experiences like that? Any mm -hmm. bad experiences? Nothing like that. Oh. No. Let me ask you this. You said, we're talking about tips and girls and you said, I don't think it depends on, it matters on the gender. Mm -hmm. How often do you get hit on when the guys start drinking or the girls start drinking? Do you get hit on a lot as a girl? Um, kind of, kind yeah. of. So How do you, you just, sway? You have to just keep it professional. For me personally, if they make any sort of like jokes or comments, I'll just kind of ignore that part of what they're saying and then, I'll, you know, I'll just act like they, they didn't say it at all. But <laughs> um. <laughs> So you know, speak your English when they start acting funny, right? <laughs> The reason I want or to I'll ask just act this, like I'm busy, I have things to do, and I'll just get back yeah, to work. Yeah, you start uh, fixing mm -hmm. the props and, and uh, cleaning the... Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe I'll act like I got like a call or something. I don't know. Just, You're a good actress as well. Just try to well. sway, sway from that, you okay. know, because you don't want any problems. You don't know if like their girlfriends are there. Because guys will try to hit on you still if they have a girlfriend sometimes. Just, I respect that about you. Cheers. You were talking about tips. See right? your ambition. <laughs> Cheers to your ambition. What did you think of the... The green juice I made you? It's good. Yeah? It's really good. Do you want to know what I put in it, or you just rather enjoy it? It tastes very greeny. Yeah. I mean, I kind of watched you. Oh, you were watching me? I thought you were on your phone. Yes. Yeah. Don't, don't take drinks from random guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So when busy season comes around, guys, and you have only one booth or maybe two booths, but not two helpers or three helpers, I recommend doing white label. That's one. That's mm -hmm. when you send them on your behalf and you pay the contractor and the client pays you. Or you can reach out to people who have a photo booth business and then let them know, are you available on this day? Would you like to go take on this event? And then you send them the client and then they deal with the whole payment processing and then you get a finder's fee. Mm -hmm. But I will never ever do that again where I just give away free, free business because it's become so competitive. Have you noticed that the supply and demand, there's like, it's mm -hmm. a little uneven right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people coming out to the photo booth industry. And with that being said, what have you started focusing on now being in the industry for this time to kind of help you 
still get funnel in a lot of more leads is there something specific that you do when it comes to marketing i feel like a lot of it for me has been word of mouth and instagram and google too it's just that my google page personally hasn't been showing up as much but that's a whole nother a whole nother topic okay. um that i have to fix but yeah so i feel like a lot of it is word of mouth and then a lot of times i'll find people um like you'll do an event or like a party and then someone from that event will want to book you for their next party so mm, um i get it yeah it's just I think it's, it's fascinating because the people that I've talked to, everyone gets business in their own unique way. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of word of mouth. You get a lot of referrals, right? Mm -hmm. I've met people where they spend a good amount of money on ads. And then I met other photo booth operators that go into the political world, go to like the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. um, anyone in the city. And so they get leads from people that are that, that are already plugged into like the system where there's mm -hmm. like a database of people that throw parties frequently. And then you have other people that really try to promote on social media mm -hmm. a lot. And so everyone has their own style. There are people that strongly believe that the website will do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And I think there's really a good, uh, so the way I see it is, I think that people mm -hmm. should spend a good amount of time and money on their website because when you go to sleep, your website is your representation. Your website is your assistant. Your website is gonna actually get those leads in. So mm -hmm. I think that websites are very important because they run 24 seven. All right, so it's just a matter of how are those people gonna find your website. Exactly. Another really good way to get leads would be um, connecting with other vendors. Um, I've done some expos and I've um, made connections with other vendors. Um, I've done like wedding um, and bridal clothes and stuff like that. Um, and that that could help too because once they get their clients they they usually always say that they have someone that asks them for or that their clients will ask them if they know someone that has a photo booth so um yeah it, it is good to connect with other other vendors for sure so 2024 now you have two photo booths you have a couple of assistants what's next <laughs> this year i'm working on um for me for 2024 I'm working on um, trying to focus more on a certain type of event yeah. um, and trying to perfect my craft to where it suits those those kinds of events um, mm -hmm. like an ideal client so I guess um, what's next would just be me trying to perfect my craft because I'm not I'm not where I would like to be sure but I feel like as um so then let's do this let's do this ideally right mm -hmm. in a perfect world where everything falls into place with minimal effort and you have shit going on autopilot tell me what would be your dream for your photo booth business lay it down right now because if we can reverse engineer that we both know it's possible but what's the fastest route to get there what would be ideal for you and this is just for you personally because everyone has different measurements and uh, language when it comes to success. So tell us what Donya would, would see as an ideal world uh, and her photo booth business and, and labeling it a success. And go. <laughs> Cut that part out. <laughs> so my plan when I started the business yeah. was um, to have it as a way to make like passive income. So where I, I would have like a team of people like, working for me. Um, I mean, I would still, I would still like to get to that point. It's just taken a lot longer than I had imagined. Okay. Because you do need the right kind of people on your team too. Yes. Um, especially with working with events and parties, and um, and specifically for me, because I would like to focus more on like weddings and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. I would need. Um, I mean, I guess you don't need it, but for me personally, I would need more, like, more people that have like like class working for me because you have to be extra. Like, Mm -hmm. professional with things like exactly <laughs> but um so the way that i would do that is the way that i would accomplish that is i'll get on groups on facebook and instagram and i'll start i'll start following nothing but wedding planners mm -hmm. because as soon as you dive into that world little by little you can kind of smudge your way in mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and you'll meet one wedding planner, two wedding planners, three wedding planners, maybe even a wedding planner agency. And right away within that realm, they have friends, they have a network and they, you can tell them, look, hey, we're hiring. So then once you get some people, like you said, have some minimal experience in the event world, mm -hmm. then you the can- The wedding industry. In precisely, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you actually can start interviewing them in bulk, like two to three people at one time over a Zoom call. Have, have literally have a script and the script could be like way crazy. You can start off by telling them, if someone's drunk and they throw up on you at an event, what would you do? It's super random, right? Yeah. So ask them that question, see how they react, check out their personality. Now, when you're on Facebook, another thing that you can do is you go on Facebook and there's a, for job openings, now hiring, and you can actually start posting weekly, hey, we're hiring. So then once you get inquiries and you get those emails, now you're funneling in potential candidates. Mm -hmm. So I can say that maybe one week out of the month, you use that one week to filter to those candidates and then start hiring and bringing them in. That part is not that difficult. You just have to do what I just told you. Once you have like three or four people, this is going to be the hard part because out of those three or four people, you've never hired someone before on a professional level, right? So you don't have HR skills, but you do have your intuition and you do know what mission you are on and you do know what type of person you want to represent your business. Right. So you're just gonna have to give people chances, but also what I would do is I take them with me to events and I would take, and I've done this plenty of times, I have videos on YouTube, is I take like two to three guys with me. Um, I haven't really, I only, just a couple of girls, but primarily guys for me. And, and, and I went to this event once, right? And one of the guys that was helping me, I was telling him, don't do that. It's not a good idea to do this. And so he started talking back. Mm -hmm. Like, well, that's what you have business insurance for, just in case that happens. Mm -hmm. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, motherfucker, like, I'm, I don't want to go through a fucking case. Yeah. Because you dropped the ball. It doesn't matter whether I have insurance or not. Right. So right away, I'm saying like, I never call that guy ever again. And, 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 and um, if I would have just taken him and not the other guy, right, then I would have wasted my day completely. But I took two guys and yes, you pay them some money up front, right, because they're assisting you, but they're learning. And this allows you to train more people at one time and then select which one you want to move forward with. Mm -hmm. And after that, it just becomes about being consistent, communicating with them every other week, letting, reminding them like this is our goal, this is our mission, and also providing them with a reward system. One of my reward systems is simple. Hey, get three reviews on Google for the event that you get sent out to, and you'll get an extra 30 to $50. Those are just like little rewards. And so it's not so much about getting those three Google reviews, but it's about them getting into the spirit and attitude to actually acquire those mm -hmm. because that's a reflection of their performance. So they see the reviews as like, I can get it and get money that fast. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it. But they don't, they don't think about the part where it's like, how am I going to say it? How am I going to approach it? How do I word it? Mm -hmm. They go for it. And so yeah. that ignites that asking, yeah. you know, and, and, and there's, a, there's an art to it. So I'm sure you can get, I'm sure here in 2024, don't you? You could end up with two to three decent assistants. No one's great. You have to train them. And then after that, you're going to need to bring someone on that's better than you are because then you want someone to manage your team for you. Mm -hmm. And slowly, you'll start realizing you became what's called a boss. I'm a boss ass bitch, 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 bitch. I'm a boss ass There's a roadmap, bitch. your ideal plan. Mm -hmm. But before you get to that point, it's very important for you to actually have a good amount of events lined up so that you can have to keep those workers busy, consistent. Right. So how does that look like in real life? If you have a nine to five right now, you might stay there a little longer. And the reason why is because when you do have these new events and you have these helpers, you want to keep them busy, which means they're going to go out there and execute the event for you. They're going to get more experience. They're going to get comfortable and you're still going to get a cut, but you're not making all the money anymore because you're no longer the owner operator. Mm -hmm. You're the owner managing the business. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah. Because when I it gets can. even more busy, mm -hmm. then you, you already know that out of those two people probably working together, you'll be able to send one to one event, one to the other. Yeah. So you'll be staying at that nine to five a little bit longer until a point where you have three employees 
and you said, okay, if I'm staying this busy and now I have my pipeline filled like this, then I can actually say goodbye to my nine to five and be the operator for a little bit and now make more money, but now I have two to three employees working. Mm -hmm. And from that point on, you can restructure your business however you want because you have cash flow now. Mm -hmm. you, you have that, in a sense, passive income. And then I can be in Thailand riding an elephant, but still making money at the same time. Elephants are amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Doña, please tell us really quick, what are your hobbies aside of being a photo booth business owner? That's not a hobby, but what are some hobbies to kind of like help you shake off the stress or sweat the stress away or what puts you in the zone? Making money is a hobby. <laughs> Damn. It feels like it sometimes. That's sounding hard. Money making is a hobby. It's as soon as like you get paid for something, it feels good. Oh, damn. Especially if you, if you can get paid more for like less time. Mm -hmm. I do also do the tooth gems on the site too. Mm -hmm. So I love doing tooth gems because it is a lot of fun. And it, it, um, it's very quick and easy money also. But aside from making money as a hobby, I, I like going to the gym. Um, Why you got shy because you go to the gym? <laughs> I'm gonna say something else. I like going to the gym. Um, I like playing my instrument. What kind of instrument do you play, don't you? <laughs> called a hand pan. A hand pan? Did you bring it here today? I did. It's right behind you. It is? How did I miss it? <laughs> Would you like to play a little something for us? Just like 30 seconds? Dude, we really love that. Are you gonna act like you don't know what a hand pan is? <laughs> That's a hand pan? I thought it was a UFO you found <laughs> in the middle of the desert. I think... It's my turtle shell that I hide in after my... Dude, that is amazing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today on our show we have someone very talented by the name of Doya. This is her hand pan right over here. How did this turn into... I'm bringing it around. A very talented Noya, go ahead and this now. turtle shell. It looks like a UFO. <laughs> what? That's my hand pan. So in my free time, I like to unwind with this thing. Where can people follow you for both the photo booth world and do you have an Instagram for your hand pan? It's not set up yet? Is it set up at all? <laughs> no, it's like empty. There's zero everything. There's no posts, no profile picture. Do you have a social media handle though? I don't even know what yes. But I it? don't know exactly how it looks. All right, guys, I'll go ahead and put in the description box below if you want to follow Donya during her journey of uh, her hand pan. And you guys are into this. Can I try it out? All right. Of course. I'll trade you. There you go. So, <clears throat> <laughs> all right. Wow. This is a magical instrument. You feel that? I didn't want to stop, but I know we got to <laughs> stop. Cut the cameras. This is great. Uh, out of curiosity, how much would this cost me if I wanted to buy one? Brand new? Uh, I mean, does it have to be brand new? Can I get one with, I, I don't, I, I mean, would it matter if I got a brand new or it not? It depends um, if you want it to be like a really good quality or not, because there are some that are cheaper, but the notes won't hold out as long. So I guess they use like a, um, a different kind of metal or something, but um, this one I got used from a lady on Craigslist. Um, I bought it for thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred? For this? Oh yeah, you could have bought a photo booth for your business. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I did that years later. But... Yeah, no, this is really good. Thank you so much for sharing everything. Can you let people know exactly where they want to find you if they want to network with you? Well, my photo booth Instagram oh. All right. is three sixty underscore bliss. Cool. What about a website? My website is... <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> My website is um, www.360bliss.info. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We are going to continue bringing in guests, enjoying this conversation that revolves around the photo booth industry, guys. If you're interested, please hit me up. I'll go ahead and put my email in the description box below. Have a blessed time. Yes, ma'am? I was going to wait. Oh, and uh, good luck on your next event, baby. Peace out. <laughs>